Hey guys, today we're going to do a walkthrough of the financial goal calculator. This is going to show us how to do loops and if statements. Hopefully we can put a switch in there. What this is, is this is a little calculator based on this equation to calculate interest. The user is going to be able to enter in their investment and they'll enter in what their interest rate is and then they'll be able to choose from a little menu. We want to allow them to choose to calculate how many years it'll take them to reach perhaps a financial goal or we'll allow them to enter in the years and it will tell us how much money they will have after that many years. Either way it's our same uh, math equation. We just take their investment, multiply it by their interest rate and that gives us the interest they're earning that year and add that into their original investment. So I currently have a C++ program set up and all it is just a little C out statement with financial goal calculator. We're going to code this together to get this to work. All right, so first of all, we're going to need a couple of variables. We'll need a variable for their um, their financial goal, their how much they're investing, and their interest rate. Those will all have to be floating point values. So you can use, use float or double. Either way will work. So I said investment. We need their goal, and we need the interest rate. Okay, semicolon at the end. Now we'll need a couple of uh, variables that are int as well. We may pre we need how many to know how many years we're calculating, and then if we're going to have a variable for their choice, if if they choose on that little menu it said choose one for this, choose the two for the second option, and three to quit. So we'll have also have a variable for their choice. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is we want to print out this menu. So I'm going to do a couple of C out. Uh, statements and through the the magic of television or the magic of copy and paste since this isn't something I want to you can pause the video and get this typed in this is just a few C out statements to let the user know what they're going to choose so I've got C out and then this extraction operator and this is what I want to print out and then an end line and that's how all three of them are so this is just a little menu to show them what their what um what their options are. So now we need to ha have them enter in their choice. So I'm going to do a C in statement and notice our, that's a C I N E, C in. Our operator goes the other way. The operator always points to the stream for the most part. I'm not sure how that works in my head, but for some reason it does. <laughs> um, all right, so since we're entering in, the operator goes this way. How's that? So we allow them to enter in their choice. Now from here, we can either do an if statement or a switch statement. Now I know you've done if statements in your 1400 class. So I'm going to show you a switch statement. I'll probably go back and get an if statement in there too as well, but you know. All right, so I'm going to say switch and I want to switch whatever their choice is. A switch statement and an if statement are the same. The only difference is switch statements are supposed to be more efficient as far as the computer is concerned, um, but they're not as versatile. If statements are so much more versatile. A switch statement, you can only do an, an int here and you're limited to whole numbers on what your cases are. So you can say, if the variable's a one, do this. If the variable's a two, do this. There's no greater than or less than or comparing or anything like that. It's usually used for menus, which is what we're doing. So that's why we're doing a switch statement. All right, so each of the items are called cases. So we're gonna do a case for case one. And I'm gonna put some a comment in here that says, calculate years to financial goal. And then I'm going to put a break statement because you always have to have a break statement with a switch case. So if they choose one, it's going to do this. And I cannot spell the word financial. I swear I have like copied and pasted this word every time I've spelled it. Okay, then we want if they happen to do a case two. If they do a case two, we're going to do a little comment here that tells us that we're going to calculate their amount based on their interest. Then we do have to have our break. There it is. Okay. Now, so far, 
this program is going to show the menu, allow them to enter in their choice, and if their choice is one, it's going to do this. If their choice is two, it's going to do this, and then it's going to quit. We want a little further than that. We want it to keep repeating until they choose to quit. So now we have three types of loops. We have a for loop, a while loop, and a do while loop. We need to use the for loop when we know the number of times our loop will iterate. Well, we don't know that. They might choose that they're going to do run this calculator like three times. They might choose that they're going to run this calculator seven times. We don't actually know. Okay, sorry, I got called away there just for a sec. Let's um, continue this on. So we want this code to repeat. And a for loop will, we don't use a for loop for knowing the number of iterations it's going to take. We don't have that situation. So we'll either use a while loop or a do while loop. Well, they're both conditional, so they'll both work. Now, a, while, a do while loop is going to iterate through the loop at least one time. Well, do we want to show the menu first? Yes, we kind of do. So in this situation, a do while loop is going to be the best. I'm going to come up here to the beginning of right after I've declared my variables. I should probably list these sections out. This is our declare the variables section. And then here's where our loop is going to start. So I have a do right up here at the top. So now, since I'm going to put all of this code in the loop, I'm going to tab this over once, and I'm going to end up with my while statement. I do have to have a little closing squiggly bracket before the word while, which I am forgetting. There it is. Now, what's our condition? Well, it's based upon our choice. I want to keep repeating so long as the choice hmm, is less than three. That would work. Semicolon at the end of this. So now it's going to run this code, allow them to enter this in. If it's three, three does not meet this criteria, so it will fall out of the loop. One and two do. They could also enter a negative one. I'm not going to stop that on this one, but yeah, it's possible. Okay, so now that we've got this this basic, let's just compile, make sure we're working so far. Uh, got a couple of unused variables and stuff like that, but it looks like for the most part it's compiling. There we go. Yep, lots of unused variables. That's okay, because we're going to use them soon. Okay, so the next part is I want to, if they've choose one or if they choose two, either way, I want to allow them to enter in their investment and their rate. Um, if they've chose one years to their financial goal, I'll have them enter in their goal. And if they are calculating their amount based on years, I'll have them enter in the years. But either way, if it's one or two, I want them to enter in two values. So I'm going to do that with an if statement before they even get to that case. If choice is less than two. If their choice is three to quit, I don't want to have them enter in that information. So here in this situation, I'm going to, through the magic of television, copying and paste in a little bit of chunk of code that you already know how to do. So here I'll have them enter in their initial investment. And there's our CN statement for the investment. I have them enter in their rate. Now the rate is a percentage. So if they type in one, that's really 1%. So I'm going to calculate that right now. I'm just going to say rate divide equals 100. Okay, this is a shortcut. A shortcut meaning I can do rate equals rate divided by 100. That means the same thing, right? So I'm taking my rate, dividing it by 100. That way I'm getting the actual percentage. Instead of saying 1 is equal to the value 1, no, it's actually 1%, which is 0 .001. All right. I kind of like the shortcut, so I'm going to go back to the shortcut, and it looks like I'm running out of recording time. So I'm going to pause this video and do a part two in just a second. Don't forget to put that rate in, though. Rate divide equals 100.